Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai, welcome to C++ program. In today's session, that is the part 1 of our session, I'll be teaching you basics of principles of object oriented programming. What is procedure oriented programming? What is object oriented programming? What are the basic concepts of object oriented programming? And what's the difference between iostream and iostream.h? And what are the, some of the simple steps, how to printf, how to do some value scanning with the help of C in, uh, instead of scanf and all those things. And what's the importance of STDA? That's the namespace concept. Let's get into this. What is procedure oriented programming? Procedure oriented programming, we can see say that the C programming is a procedure oriented programming. In C, what we are basically doing is something like this. We have some include files. We do most of the variables as a global variable. We create multiple functions and plus functions is also called procedures. Okay. So create multiple functions we, for the communication purpose. We call each functions in the main method. So basically all the communication is done with the help of functions only. So intercommunication between the functions is done in the procedure oriented programming. So one of the major problems is that as the program get larger, it is quite difficult to handle because we are more mostly handling our data with the help of global variables. So like you can see some has been used using the variable value, even subtraction is using the variable value. So at the end of the time, anytime you face a problem, you will not understand which particular function has changed to modify the value of value and you are facing the problem so that's one of the disadvantages you can say in precision programming somehow it is quite successful but it, as the program gets complex that means number of lines get great more it's quite difficult to manage with the procedure into programming so there comes the second options that is a secondary one or you can say as a solution one is object-oriented concepts or object-oriented programming in object-oriented programming something happens like this way we create multiple classes okay so all the communication is done with the base on the classes like I require some class I create the class with the variables and with the methods class is nothing but if you if you know the procedure into programming there is a feature called something called structure in C okay class is just an upgradation of structure okay in structure we used to have only variables okay in C++ the class is having variables plus methods and it has put some extra specifiers and all those rules and regulations so basically in C++ we or in object oriented programming we create classes and we create to use the classes we create the objects and all the communication is done with the help of objects only so objects methods communicate with each other and in this way if I want to have some student data I create a class for student in the, this way I need a, class, a class for employee I create a class for employee so multiple classes are created as per the requirements so in object oriented programming we can say we create classes and in procedure oriented programming we can say we create functions and we do the communications so somehow object oriented programming solves some of the problems that is like the global variables and all the such problems have been solved we'll see how it has been solved and all those things and on based on all these features the basic concepts comes of object oriented programming one of the main features of object oriented programming is the major, major concept is like the classes and objects so what's classes and objects is like as i've told you for any communication in object oriented programming we create classes classes is nothing but a user defined data type you can call a class as a user defined data type you can call cl class as a upgraded value of structure okay in class we create the variables we create the methods and finally we create the objects okay fundamentally you should know very well what is class and why we create class and all those things so I like to explain much one part of the class okay suppose someone says you want to store a 10 value you say for 10 I have integer data type to store it someone says I want to store 10.56 you will say I have float or double value for that I'm just take putting float someone says you want to store a you have character so you have basically all the values the data types for different values to be stored someone says I want to store student now student is quite difficult to be stored because student can have roll number student can have marks student can have a uh, name student can have address student can have gender so there is no such data type which can store student at once or you can say all the data which students is required so C++ or the this concept is quite common in this, uh, C also because structure is there. So in C you can say they, they came up with a new concept called user defined data type. They allow the users to create their own data type with the help of uh, structure. And in C++ because we are learning C++ so I will call it as a class. In C++ the same is been upgraded and it is been called as class. So it is a given an option to the user to create their own data type. So I say class student. I specify integer rule number. I specify integer marks. I can specify string name okay I'll explain what string and all 
so all the data types which is required I declare it now in C++ class is having something extra also that is whatever methods or operations you want to perform in these variables you have to declare inside the class so operation is quite simple it's quite difficult for students to understand what are the operations will be there quite generally it happens there will be two methods one is the set data with the help of which we can allow values to be inserted into the variables and one is a method called display okay why I have kept public and why I have not kept in the top and all I'll explain later but right now just remember one concept that all the variables should be generally be private okay and all the methods should be public this happens most of the cases that 90% of cases there are 10% cases there in exceptional cases you want to put some of the methods as private and some of the variables as public and there is another extra specifier as protector also we'll see later on in the when we see inheritance so now the there are two major methods which are there in the class most of the time that is the set data and the display other methods are it depends up to you as per your requirements you can have it like get marks or get percentage or whatever operations you want to perform with the class you can have that with the help of the methods so basically class is helping us to create our own data types have our own uh, values to be there inside our own operations to be there it's all as per our requirements it is being created but class is a masterpiece we can't use the masterpiece we can we have to replica the masterpiece That's the same happens with the class also that means we can't use student directly because we have to first create the objects so object is just a replica of a class you can say object as a type of class only so you can now store values in object you can't store values inside a class so that is one more important thing you should understand and second thing is you never able to store values directly into the class okay that is not allowed inside the class so that is the two important things one thing is that class help us to create our own data types it will have variables and it will have methods and second thing is you can't use class directly you have to create the object so object is one of the most important things to use the class that's one of the major features now what is abstraction and encapsulation encapsulation means wrapping of data and function single unit that says the definition says that exactly is the class is doing that is the variables you are wrap it with the help of functions okay by making the variables as private no one else outside from outside you can't access the variable that means you can't write of which a roll number is equal to 10 this will give you an error okay the, because the variable is been declared as private so you are helping you are wrapping the data okay with the functions okay so if you want to modify the roll number you have to go through the set data and in the set data you can put validations and you can then only it will allow us to put appropriate values to the roll number so that type that way you can put some security into the variables that is what abstraction says uh, uh, sorry encapsulation says abstraction means just giving us the uh, major information without adding major details or without going more detail into the structure that is like the functions the class is one of the best example of it you can only whatever things you want to do you just call the methods you don't have to understand what is inside the return so you just simply create the object you get call get marks you will get appropriate values what is done in the background it is not shown to the user that is usually is only shown what is exactly we needed to no to him second third comes the inheritance it has one of the good features that with the help of inheritance i can i can achieve the features which is already been used or which has already been declared in some class okay so that means i am reusing the properties which is already been in use okay without disturbing the old properties i am using the own them in my new class that is the concept of inheritance polymorphism is there are two types of polymorphism compile time and runtime polymorphism function overloading and all operate overloading is an example of compile time polymorphism virtual function help us to do the uh, polymorphism at runtime with the help of which we can call the function at runtime we'll see later what it is all about dynamic binding is with the help of inheritance polymorphism we can call the function that is something like a runtime polymorphism that is some we can call as dynamic binding that is the function to be called is not known at the till the end okay that is called at the runtime only so you can say it is somehow mixture of inheritance plus polymorphism it is it is even called as runtime polymorphism only message patching is simply passing the appropriate values to the function set so these are the basic concepts of object oriented programming the most important is these three okay your polymorphism somehow depend on inheritance and same way the other are there so let's get into the uh, straight away to a program and let's understand what's there in the C++ okay so first of all is the header file okay if you're using turbo C okay so you must be doing something like this you've created IO stream you have must have created conio.h 
and you have must have created integer main I'll show you what all these things are there I'll explain each of them why I have written C out why I have written the header files what is all this about okay I'll save it first of all uh, this will not be compiled in my because I'm using G G++ uh, compiler in Linux so it will not allow I just want to show you what you will be doing in Turbo C++ so I've saved it I want to say first thing is the iostream.h what is this it is a header file that has been newly been created for C out and scene C out or scene is a just a, a replacer for printf and scanf instead of printf you have to use C out and instead of scanf you have to use scene okay why they have done it it is it is much better than printf and scanf because in printf and scanf most of the user makes mistakes in percentage d they have to be careful whether you have to use percentage d whether they have to use percent c or which one okay so the, here it is mean not there such things it is much easier you don't have to remember all those things and even the variables address sometimes people, students used to forget in scanf and person and all those such problems are there in quite common in programmers so it is quite been removed with the help of c out and scene so io stream is a header file being there which is having the c out and scene objects it's basically an inbuilt object we'll see later but it's an inbuilt object and uh, it's an operator being used to transfer va value to the screen okay it is been operated has been overloaded we can even overload for our purpose also we not use use scene here okay and conio is used because i have to use get ch okay now when i try to compile this program in my g plus plus let's terminal let's try show you ls i can see my program g plus plus it will say there is no such file as iostream.h the reason is because in the latest or in in vc++ you will be will be able to run this program because it is having this header file but most of the header files that is iostream.h is been removed okay some of the compilers have not now included iostream instead of that it is using the concept there is a new feature being introduced in uh, uh, C++ that's namespace concept I will be taking one session for namespace timely just remember that in namespace we have divided the program into much different parts in the same file we have divided the programs in parts and we have put a wrapper on it and call that wrapper as a namespace concept okay that's a quite simple way I've tried to explain you but it is quite much things is possible in that also so let me compile this why I've done is I'll just show you okay in most of the compilers it is having iostream.h and uh, without also now if you are using the namespace concept you will not have the header file.h okay that's first thing you have to write using namespace std because std is the namespace in which the c out and c in is being specified and much other objects is being specified because i want to use c out and c in so i am specifying using namespace std so making those way objects as a global integer main is the second change you will find compared to c in c it was void main in c++ it you have to use integer main because it it, it is an integer uh, you have to return some value i am specifying return zero okay c out is the value i want to print okay uh, so i'll just specify the hello world slash in as co quite common and c uh, we used to use to put it in a new line i'll compile it it has been compiled let me run it so I can see I'm getting my hello world so this is my first C++ program is being compiled show you okay now I've explained you iStream I explained you by using this thing and uh, before getting into the end I just want to say that normally whenever you compile and it goes into the two process that is compiling linking and finally it is creates output file or executable file if you're using Windows it will be creating executable file compiling is the one step which we have done right now okay so linking is done in the background what it does is like whatever header file is having it will try to come uh, get them linked into the one program and it will generate a common executable file or output file and finally we run the output file and if you can see that it has generated my out file and i've created i've used i've run my program with the help of main dot out so in this way you can create different types of programs uh, some of the some of the changes you can create any time anywhere any any variables that is not quite possible in c in c you have to create all the variables at the top only before using any statements so it is not like that you can say enter the variable enter the value saying the user is seen i'm telling ariel so whatever the user is entering that value will be transferred to ariel 
the value is real so in this way you can use this operator any n number of times in the same line to print some particular data and if you see here no printf percentage d or m person is to be used let's try to compile it and see what's happening it's been compiled let's try to run it it's asking me the value i'm saying is the value is 100 and it is printing and if you can see that is the value is finally been stored into the variable and it is printing me so i can say anytime you can create any variable as per your requirement is better practice if you know the variables to create those variables at the top only so it will help you to in the programming section this is all about the f in the first part of our session we have seen the principles why we uh, require object oriented concepts what are the some of the disadvantages of procedure oriented programming what is procedure oriented programming how uh, class is there what is the importance of objects what is an encapsulate abstraction inheritance and all why uh, what is the difference between iostream.h and iostream iostream.h is an older header files which has been available in most of the uh, compilers but i uh, prefer use iostream only using the namespace of namespace concept see out and see what are the objects been doing what is the concept of namespace how the program is executed that is compiling linking and all those process in the next session we will be seeing much more details what are the, the things are there what functions are there and all those things i hope so you have i been able to teach you what i want to and if you have any queries you can just uh, drop some comments or else you can just mail me at my email address thank you very much